Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astri Krasnici. I'm CCNA and CCMP certified instructor. Today I will do a demonstration on calculating and configuring an IPv6 route summarization. This is packet tracer activity 6.4.2.4, which is CCNA semester 2. Okay, so if I go to my packet tracer files, what I'm going to use is this one. Okay, now the packet tracer has opened. Let me uh, move this activity to the. Cancel this. Okay, this is our lab and this is our activity. Okay, objectives for this activity is to calculate a summary route for R1 and then configure the summary route and verify connectivity. In this activity, we will cal uh, calculate, configure and verify a summary route for all the networks R1 can access through R2. R1 is configured with a loopback interface. Instead of adding a LAN or another a network on R1, use a loopback interface to simplify testing and verify route. Um, to, sorry, verify routing. Okay, so calculate a summary route. Um, Right. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put all these networks in the notepad, and then we calculate the summary route. So if I click open that notepad, this is for from IPv4 summarization. Okay. So we want all these networks to be summarized into one network, and then we configure a static route from R1 to reach all the networks. Okay. So if I put them on the table in notepad. Let me just copy these. So Control C and paste. Right. Um, so I'm going to delete it. Uh, delete this. Okay. To make sure that we have all the networks so yep that's it that's it okay so what's our task anyway let's not jump the gun when somewhere is in ipv6 look at the prefix to determine whether the address and where address ends in the case 64 ends the fourth is the segment so in this case uh, most of the time it ends 4 64 List the four, uh, first four segments for of each uh, the networks. Because the first three segments have an identical hexadecimal digit, there are no need to write them in the binary. The fourth segment is different, therefore write this bit in the binary. And count the most matched bits. Okay, fine. These are these are our networks here, right? So let me just move this so it doesn't distract us. Now, the first octet. Now this is called the hexadet, yeah. So first hex set is the same for all of them. The second hex set is the same for all of them. Now it's compressed. So the leading zero is missing here, yeah? So let's just write that just so it doesn't confuse us, yeah? So let's write the leading zeros back. All right. Now, I think we just need to summarize these. Because this network actually connects with router ton, router one. So this is from R2 towards R1. So we're not going to summarize that. But we're going to summarize everything else. So the first three hex sets are exactly the same on all all networks. So what we have here: one, two, three, four, five, six. On six networks, the first three hex sets are the same. The difference is here, right? So here is the difference. But remember, because it's sorry, let's go back how it was. Don't forget with IPv6 we have something compressed version. We can write it out in a compressed version, which means uh, leading zeros have been removed. Any contigu contiguous zero is represented with a double colon like you can see here that's not our concern at the moment the concern is here 
So the leading zeros. Oh, when you do the summary, or when you're at the beginning, right? Until you get very confident with it. At the beginning, write, the, write them down. So the leading zeros, I want to put them back how I was, right? That's how it was. Okay. Now, look where, where the difference is. In the fourth hex set, last hexadecimal digit. So only here. So here is the difference. Behind, everything will become zero. So I don't need the measure either. So I'll get rid of these. Because everything will become zero. Get rid of them. Right. So we are going to convert only this hexadecimal digit. So what is B in binary? B is 11, yeah? So when 11, it's in 4-bit representation because each hexadecimal digit is 4-bit, yeah? So B is 11, so it's going to be 8, 0 and 4, plus 2, that's 10, 11. C is 12, so it's going to be 1, 1, 0, 0. That's 12, 18, 4, 12. Now, A is 10, so it's going to be 8, 2, 10, 0. B again is on, 0, 1, 1. D, D is 13. So D, what is 13? So 8, 12, 13. And C is 12. So 12, 8. Okay, here we go. Now, when we can look at it, because what we did is like we took the hexadecimal digit and we converted in the binary. These are the represented in the binary. So we have to look where the difference are. So here. Up to that bit, it's, they're all the same. Up to that bit, they're all the same. So when we count one digit in hex in IPv4, sorry, IPv6, is four bits, right? So this is 4, 8, 12, 16. So 16 bits in hex one hexet. Hexet. Another 16 bit, that's 32. 32 bits. Another 16 bit, that's 48. 48 bits. Plus 4, 52. Plus 4, 56. Plus 4, 60. Plus this one here, 61. So there's a 61 bit are the same. And then we convert this back into hexadecimal representation. So 2001, 0 deviate, 5f, 5f, 73, then 0, 0, 0, 0. And then we convert this into hexadecimal digit. Remember, everything else becomes 0, yeah? So zero 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 all that. But now this bit, what does it represent? If I join them back again, right? Because we just find out what it is. So everything out behind becomes zero. So what does that digit represent? I don't want because more some students I don't say most students but some students they say ah oh, one it's not one because if you put these back here like this because everything behind it becomes zero but this bit now it's not one it's eight All right so I'll put eight here so brief uh, like a summary address of all these four networks or six networks here we can add is this two thousand one. 0 db8 57 5f73 colon 0008 4 slash 61 and we have to we can compress we remove the leading zeros there we go okay and then contiguous zeros behind represented like this so that's our summary address right so if we look here now 
Okay, so if we go through here, it's, it's telling you to do the same thing, except uh, convert these zeros into zeros. Is there? It's not fun. Okay. Now, configure a directly attached summary root on R1. So we have to go to R1 and configure a directly attached summary root. So if I look at R1, it's S000. That's our directly attached. So if I go to topology, open R1, and type enable, config T. And remember IPv6, yeah? We have to say IPv6 root, and then find the root that we did. There we go. Just copy this. Paste. Directly attached is S000. There we go. And show IPv6 root. That's our static root. We just did. Okay. Hey, there we go, 100%. That was one command line. PC1 should be able to ping PC2. PC1 and PC2 should be should both be able to ping the loopback 0 on R1. Okay, so uh, show IP interface brief. Uh, we haven't given, uh, I'm going to put an IP address on the back. So where is IP address? Here. Okay, control C. Config T. Interface loopback 0. IPv6 address and then paste. And show IP v6. Oh, oh, didn't try IPv4. Try IPv6 interface brief. Okay, I hope I got, I got the right one. I did. Okay, excellent. Now, uh, PC1. So let's go to PC1. PC1 should be able to ping PC2 and the loopback. So if I go to desktop. To check the configuration, IPv6 config. Right, that's my address. So I want to ping, uh, ping the loopback. Control C. Yes. Without four slash. Eh? Yeah, no problem. And then ping PC2. I don't have the IP address for PC2. Okay, let's go and get it. So if I go to topology, find PC2. Desktop. IPv6 config. And that's the address of PC2. I should be able to ping this. Copy and go to PC1. I'm picking that. So ping and paste it. Yeah. Yeah, reply. Excellent. That was a nice and quick. Thank you very much for watching this video. My name was Astrid, oh, I still is, Astrid Krasnici, and I did demonstration on configuring IPv6 root summarization. Thank you very much, and see you in the future videos.